This is a river, or rather, a riverbed. Here in Arizona, one of the hottest places in the United States, it is not unusual to see rivers losing their base flows, becoming almost always dry. It's part of the landscape, part of the local history. But is it possible to bring waterways back to life? How can those that are under threat be protected? These are questions that a number of scientists are considering. This is the city of Tucson, home to the University of Arizona. Its huge campus houses the French CNRS laboratory, iGlobes. For several years, the geographer Anne-Lise Boyer has been studying the region's water sources. She is particularly interested in the Santa Cruz River, which runs through the city, but has gradually dried up over the last century as a result of global warming and human activity. Today, Anne-Lise Boyer came to see a section where the water is once again flowing, thanks to an initiative led by the local authorities. Right there is the water outlet of the Heritage Project a network of pipes that release treated water into the riverbed. The primary goal here is to artificially recharge the water table and put water back into a section of the river. Where the riverbed was left abandoned, almost a dumping ground, water now flows. Life is returning, vegetation is growing back. This operation is carried out in three locations in the city, where the local sewage treatment plants discharge quality water. Now the Santa Cruz is back what it used to be, an intermittent river. An intermittent river is either a stream that is dry in some parts and full in others, or one that is dry for several months of the year and full when it rains. In fact, very little is known about the functioning of intermittent waterways. In the context of climate change, more and more perennial rivers and streams could become temporary. For example, in France this summer, the levels of some watercourses had decreased significantly because of drought, which could eventually cause rivers to become intermittent. In this semi-arid environment, a mega drought has been raging since 2002. The water flows that flow all year round are few and far between. Cienega Creek, a tributary of the Santa Cruz, 75 kilometers from Tucson, is one of them. Yet the flow of this intermittent waterway is getting ever weaker. Each year, a group of people meet at a former ranch. Members of associations, farmers, scientists, and representatives of public institutions get together to discuss the state of the waterway and the ecosystem that depends on it. <laughs> Among the participants, Larry Fisher, an American ecologist, collaborates with the CNRS laboratory, iGlobes. One of the things that we've been thinking about a lot in the last few years is public outreach, educating people about the values in the watershed and how to be in the watershed and how they can support the work that we're all doing. The task force is not only interested in the creek, but is collecting data on the entire La Cienegas watershed. A watershed is a sloping geographic area that carries all the water that flows into a stream. Using scientific observations, the team can then act collectively. The scientists, of course, like myself, we contribute and analyze the monitoring data that we get so we can provide a comprehensive um, picture in time of what's going on here. We, we gather data about the water, about the climate, about the species, about the vegetation. Um, and, and collectively, we use that data to tell us what is the state of, of the watershed. After the discussions, it is time to take a closer look. This group is interested in the state of the fauna and flora around the creek since the water supports an entire ecosystem. In the Arizona desert, it is easy to spot streams. They are the only places where trees grow. After several years of extreme drought, 
Many trees died due to lack of water. This year, though, the rains were abundant, which is normally a good thing. However, this time, the flood was too strong and everything was swept away. And that's part of the predictions of climate change is um, record droughts and record floods and see so very little of the in-between because after you lose those trees and those plants and you follow that with these incredible floods crashing through here, taking down these trees and then those trees flowing down, taking out healthy trees that are just ripping everything apart. You know, how, do, how can we help stabilize that? Discussions are ongoing to find solutions. In addition to scientific data, the committee also relies on observations from farmers, like Ian Tomlinson, the owner of this ranch. He is the fourth generation of his family to graze his cows on the grasslands of Las Cienegas. The name means swamp, which this land once was. Today, it is part of a protected nature reserve. For Ian Tomlinson, it is crucial not to deplete local resources. I mean, we're the caretakers of the land. We, we take care of the waters and everything out there. Sometimes you'll see on some landscapes that aren't grazed or haven't been grazed in a while, a choking out effect. Then you get in a chance of having a monoculture or you start losing certain grasses. With the grazing, it, it allows for the landscape to keep regenerating. Here, residents and other stakeholders are trying to find solutions to the water shortage. Arizona could well be a model region, faced sooner than others with an issue that will eventually become global. The solutions found here could be adopted in the rest of the world in a few years' time. Hence the necessity to carefully observe their effects even if Arizona, with its cacti, seems so very far away. <laughs>